Ireland has a rich and diverse history of place names, which reflect the culture, language and landscape of the country. Most of the place names in Ireland come from the Irish language, but some also have influences from English and Viking languages. The place names often describe physical features, historical events or local legends associated with the location. In today's video, we're going to take another tour around Ireland and look at some towns and cities in all 32 counties of Ireland and find some of the interesting origins behind their names as well as some history of the area. But let's start first with the name of the island itself, Ireland or Era in Irish. It is said that the name Ireland comes from the old Irish word Eru, the name of the goddess. Eru and her sisters, Banva and Fola, were part of the Tuatha de Danann, the legendary tribe of gods and goddesses who ruled over Ireland in a time before mortal men walked its shores. Eru is generally believed to have been the goddess of Ireland. And the legend says when the Milesians, an invading force, saw claim over Ireland as their own, Eru, in an act of defiance, ascended to the summit of the sacred hill of Ishnach in Westmead. There she proclaimed that the land should bear her name for eternity. Her request was honoured and Ireland is named after her to this day. Okay, now let's look at some other place names in towns around Ireland. And let's begin our journey at the top of the island in County Donegal. And the town we're going to look at is Buncrana, or Buncranica in Irish. This translates to foot of the River Crana, which reflects the location of the town at the mouth of the River Crana where it empties into Loch Swilly. In ancient times, Buncrana was part of the Kingdom of Cherconnell, ruled by the O'Doherty chieftains. The O'Dohertys had a stronghold in the area, which played a vital role in local politics and defence. And it is where the Irish revolutionary Theobald Wolfstone was held captive during the 1798 rebellion. In County Derry we'll find the town of Colrain or Colrohan in Irish, meaning Nook of the Ferns. This again comes from the location of Colrain, in the bend of the River Ban, where ferns grow abundantly. And it is said that in the 5th century, the patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick, arrived in the town and was greeted by the local chieftain, who offered him a piece of ground on which to build his church. The spot was next to the River Ban and was overgrown with ferns, which was burned by some local boys to amuse themselves. This incident led to the area being called Colrohan and later to the anglicised Colrain. In Antrim we'll find the town of Balamina, or Ambalia Monach in Irish, which means middle town. This makes sense as Balamina is located in the centre of the county and reflects its historical role as a central hub connecting people trade in the heart of the county. Archaeologists have found existence of settlements in the area as early as the Bronze Age. However, the earliest signs of civilization in the vicinity of Balamina dates back to the 5th century, marked by the establishment of a church just a few miles away from present-day Balamina. Additionally, a monastery was constructed in that area, but like most of the monastic sites of that era, it fell victim to the Viking raids of the 9th century. In County Down we'll look at the town of Bangor, or Bionker in Irish, which translates to horned or peaked curve. This name describes the shape of the bay that Bangor is situated on, which resembles a horn or a peak. However, there is an old Irish myth that tells the tale of two warriors, one from Connacht and Ulster, who were returning to Ireland from the Alps with a ship full of cattle. When they came to the shore at Bangor Bay, the cattle shed their horns, thus giving rise to the name, the Strand of the Horn Casting. Now let's travel to Armagh, where we'll find Port Down or Port Undunon in Irish which means Bank of the Little Fort. Long before the plantation of Ireland, the Port of Down area had been populated by Irish Gales, and this fort was most likely the fort of the McCanns, who had been in the area since before the 13th century. Next we'll travel to Tyrone and look at the town of Oma, or Anomi in Irish. The translation of this means the Virgin Plain. This name comes from the fact that Oma is located on a flat fertile land that was untouched by human activity in ancient times. Eventually the area was settled and a monastery was apparently established on the site of the town around 792 and Oma was officially founded as a town in 1610. In Fermanagh let's look at the town of Enniskillen or Inish Cahillan which means the Island of Cahillan in Irish. Catelyn was the queen of the Fomorians and married to Balor, the king of the Fomorians. She was also a prophetess and warned Balor of the impending defeat by the Tuatha de Danann. And according to local legends, it is believed that Enniskillen is where Catelyn met her tragic end. And the story goes that Catelyn died on an island in the River Urn in the vicinity of Enniskillen after sustaining injuries from arrows in a battle. The island and surrounding town was named in her honour. 
But like all stories like this, it lacks substantial historical evidence. And some say Enniskillen was originally named after a fortress on the island in the River Erne, which was historically associated with the Maguire clan of Fermanagh. In County Monaghan we'll visit the town of Clonus, or Clun Osh in Irish, which means Meadow of Osh. But it could also mean Meadow at the Top, or Meadow of the Height. Clonus is one of the oldest continuous settlements in County Monaghan. It developed around a monastery established by St. Tirnoc in the 6th century. And St. Tirnoc's tomb in the town is marked by a stone sarcophagus dating from the 13th century. But unfortunately the abbey built by Tirnoc was attacked by both Vikings and Norman invaders. And in the 12th century, after one terrible assault, it was completely destroyed. But in the same location, St. Peter's and Paul's Abbey was built, known to the locals as the Wee Abbey. Journeying south to Cavan, we'll go to the town of Belturbet, or Belcharbeth in Irish, meaning Mouth of the Itmus. Belturbet's location is historically one of the best places for crossing the River Erne. It was the capital of the Kingdom of East Brefni, which was an historical kingdom of Ireland. When the Normans settled in the area, they built one of the finest examples of a Mott and Bailey type fortification in the country. In Loud, we'll look at the town of Drada, or Drohadaha in Irish, which means the Bridge of the Ford. This again comes from the location of Drohada, on a bridge over the River Boyne, which was once a formidable crossing point. Drohada was originally two towns built on either side of the River Boyne. Hugh de Lacey granted a charter for an establishment of Drogheda town on the mead side of the river in 1194, whereas Bertram de Verdun, another prominent Anglo-Norman, founded his town on the loud side of the river. The two towns later joined into one in 1412. A grim fact about Drogheda is that in 1921, the preserved severed head of St. Oliver Plunkett, who was executed in 1681, was put on display in St. Peter's Church, where it remains to this day. Plunkett himself was the last victim of the Popish Plot, a fabricated conspiracy against Catholics in Ireland. And on July 1st, 1681, he was found guilty of treason in London and was hung, drawn and quartered. His body was then burnt by bloodthirsty reformers. Almost 300 years later, Oliver Plunkett would then become the first Irish saint in almost 700 years. In County Mead, let's look at the town of Thrym, or Bala Aha Thrym in Irish, which means Town of the Ford of the Elder Flowers. The name comes from the fact that Trim is located on a ford across from the River Boyne, where elder flowers grow. Trim is also known for its medieval and cinematic fame, as it is the site of the magnificent Trim Castle that was featured in the Braveheart movie. The castle was presented as the Wall City of York, and some scenes that took place in London were also filmed there. Next, let's go west to Westmead and look at the town of Athlone, or Bloch Luan in Irish, which translates to Town of Luan's Fort. And the local legend is that Luan was a man who used to guide people across the River Shannon long before the first bridges were built. Over in Longford, let's look at Granard or Glonard in Irish, which means high or sunny place. Perched on top of a hill, Granard offers panoramic views and in legend, it is said to be the birthplace of Fionn McCool, the mythical leader of the Fianna warriors. Because of its high location, the area has been populated since the Celtic times. And in one of the ancient Irish epics, it mentions Granard as a place where Queen Maeve of Connacht and her army spent the night before traveling to the Cooley Peninsula in search of the Brown Bull of Cooley. In Offaly, let's look at the town of Tullamore, or on Pullock Vore in Irish, which means the Great Mound. Tullamore was also the site of the first aviation disaster. On May 10th, 1785, the town was seriously damaged when a hot air balloon crashed into the town which caused a fire that burned down as many as 130 homes. To this day, the town shield depicts a phoenix rising from the ashes. In Leash, let's visit the town of Port Leash, or Port Leisha in Irish, which means Fort of the Tribe of Legus. This refers to the ancient tribe that settled in the area in the 3rd century AD. Meribah is the former name of Port Leash Town, which was named after Queen Mary I, but it was changed to its name in 1929. Over in Kilkenny, we'll look at the town of Thomastown, or Baliavik Aundon in Irish, which means Town of the Son of Andrew. In the 13th century, King John gave the Anglo-Norman Lord Thomas Fitz Anthony control over the area around Thomastown, which historically was known as Grenon. But Thomas Fitz Anthony replaced this Irish settlement, and it is from Fitz Anthony that Thomastown was named. 
Thomastown became a small medieval walled town, with the first walls being built in 1449. In Wexford, let's look at Enniscorthy, or Inish Curhe in Irish, which means Island of the Rocks. Enniscorthy is one of the longest continuously occupied sites in Ireland, with history going back to 465. The Norman stronghold of Enniscorthy Castle dates back to 1205 and was a private dwelling all the way up to 1951. The nearby Vinegar Hill is a significant landmark in Irish history, particularly associated with the 1798 rebellion of the United Irishmen. Vinegar Hill became a strategic location during the rebellion. The hill provided a strong defence position overlooking the town of Enniscorthy and on June 21st, 1798, the Battle of Vinegar Hill took place, resulting in a bloody confrontation between the rebels and the British army. Despite fierce resistance from the rebels, the superior firepower and numbers of the British forces proved decisive. The rebels were defeated and Vinegar Hill fell to the British. The aftermath of the battle saw brutal reprisals against the rebels and widespread killings executions were carried out by British forces. And although the battle ended in failure, it had a lasting legacy in Irish history and the site remains a place of remembrance and commemoration to this day. Moving on to Carlow in the southeast of Ireland, we'll find the town of Tullow, or on Tullock in Irish, which means the hill or the hillock. The name is quite simple, but the name is quite accurate because Tullow is located on a hill overlooking the River Slaney. And in ancient times, Tullow was a site of a monastery founded by St. Columba in the 6th century. In Kildare, we'll look at Nace, or on Nos in Irish, or Nos Noriag, which means place of assembly of the kings. And in Irish mythology, it says that the area of Nace was the burial site of Nos, wife of Lu from the Tuatha de Danann. It is also said that it is where Lu held his royal court. In the Middle Ages, Nace became a walled market town and was occasionally raided by the O'Briens and the O'Toole clans from the nearby area, which eventually became County Wicklow. Speaking of Wicklow, let's head over there now and look at the town of Arklow. Now this is an example of a town with Viking influence over the name. The Irish name for Arklow is Untinder Moor, which means the Great Estuary. The name Arnkill Lag translates to Meadow of Arnkill, who was possibly the Viking leader who controlled the area at the time. Viking activity in Wicklow is documented in the Irish annals around 827 and there is evidence of Viking settlements in Wicklow and Arklow along the Vantry and Avonmore estuaries. Now let's head over to the capital and go to Dublin and I'm going to look at the town of Swords or Sword in Irish. This translates to pure or clear water from the fact that located near the town was the well dedicated to St. Colum Kill, hence the pure or clear water. One of the most notable historical events from Swords, however, is the funeral of King Brian Baru after the Battle of Clontarf. His body was laid to rest for a night in the ancient monastery in Swords, before making its final destination to Armagh. Now down to the kingdom we're going to visit the town of Tralee, or Tra Lee in Irish, which means Strand of the River Lee. Tra is beach in Irish, or Strand, and the River Lee is the river that flows through the town. And in the nearby Sleeve Mish Mountains, you will find Scotia's grave. And the local legend is that she was an Egyptian pharaoh's daughter who traveled to Ireland to avenge the death of her husband and defeat the legendary Tuatha de Danann. She died in a battle around Tralee and was buried in the mountains. And her grave is reputed to be under a huge ancient stone inscribed with Egyptian hieroglyphs. And the area to this day is known as Scotia's Glen. Over to the rebel county and we'll look at the town of Bantry or Bion Three in Irish, which means the descendants of Bion, who was the son of Conor MacNessa, the King of Ulster. Along with some other areas around the southwest of Ireland, Bantry also claims to be the ancient connection to the 6th century saint Brendan, or Brendan the Navigator. Brendan was an Irish monk who travelled the world to spread the gospel, but one of his most famous journeys was the discovery of America. Historians have always debated whether a 6th century monk could have travelled across the Atlantic Ocean to discover the New World. However, a sailor and geographer in the 70s recreated the 6th century voyage from a boat made of ox hides. In Watford, let's go to Dungarvan, or Dun Garovoin in Irish, which means Garovoin's Fort. This name is from St. Garvan, who founded a monastery here in the 7th century. While looking up the history of Dungarvan, I found a tragic episode during the Great Famine in the mid-19th century. The town experienced severe hardships during the famine, and as food prices soared, tensions in the town of Dungarvan boiled over in October 1846. 
when a shipment of maize arrived in the harbour. The starving locals, desperate, attempted to seize the cargo, but the authorities intervened, saying they had to distribute the food through the local workhouse, rather than freely among the local population. This decision angered the locals, which led to protests and eventually escalated to riots, as enraged crowds clashed with police and eventually the military had to come to maintain order. The riots were fueled by starvation, frustration and a sense of injustice. It also highlighted the failure of relief efforts and the deep rooted grievance against British rule. In Tipperary we will have to visit Cashel or Cashel in Irish, which means stone fort. The Rock of Cashel in the town was originally the seat of the King of Munster and according to legend St. Patrick himself came here to convert King Angus to Christianity. It is also the site where King Brian Baru was crowned High King at Cashel. In 1101 the King of Munster gave the Rock of Cashel to the church. Shortly after this a round tower was erected that still stands today. In Limerick let's look at the town of Adair or Ardara in Irish which means Ford of the Oak. Adair is located on a ford across from the river Moig where oak trees grow. Located on the outskirts of Adair village stands Desmond's Castle. Originally constructed in the 13th century by the Normans, this fortress served as the stronghold and the residence to the Earls of Kildare for nearly three centuries until 1563. In that year the castle was forfeited to the Earl of Desmond which gave it its current name. In Clare let's look at Ennis or Inish in Irish which means island. Ennis is surrounded by two branches of the River Fergus, forming an island-like shape. And the history of Ennis is closely linked to the O'Brien dynasty, descendants of Brian Baru. Ennis is a rare example in Ireland of a Gaelic medieval town, because it didn't bother building defensive walls. Instead it grew out of the old friary which was built around 1240. In Galway let's go to Tume or Tuam in Irish, which means mound or burial place. This actually comes from the Latin term tumulus, which means burial mound. The history of tomb dates back to the 6th century, when the O'Connor kings of East Connacht established their headquarters there. Eventually the O'Connors were defeated by the Flaherty chieftains of West Connacht and became kings of all of Connacht. In Mayo, let's visit the town of Westport, or Cahar na Mart, which means the stone fort of the Beeves. This refers to the 16th century castle owned by the powerful seafaring O'Malley family who controlled the Clue Bay area. The most famous of the O'Malley clan was the pirate queen Gráinne Niwalia, or Grace O'Malley in English. Grace O'Malley was born around 1530 off the west coast of Ireland near Clue Bay. Her father was the leader of the clan, which ruled the seas near Ackle for over 300 years, collecting taxes from all who passed through. Despite having an older brother, Grace, known for her ruthlessness and natural leadership, inherited her father's position upon his death. Initially she was left to her own devices by the English, but Grace's increasing pirate activity drew the attention of Queen Elizabeth I. This led to the English kidnapping her two sons and her half-brother. This caused Grace to set sail for England where she had an audience with the Queen. The story goes that Grace refused to bow to Queen Elizabeth nor recognise her as the Queen of Ireland. And before the meeting actually the guards allegedly found a knife hidden in Grace's dress. They conversed in the only language they shared which was Latin. She managed to secure the release of her family and even a promise from the Queen that the English Lord would step down from his position. Yet Queen Elizabeth later broke the promise and the pirate Queen Grace O'Malley was fighting again. She most likely died around 1603 at Rockfleet Castle, the same year as Elizabeth's death. In Schleigo, let's visit the town of Ballymote or Balawota in Irish. This translates to homestead of the castle mound. Ballymoat is near a moat which was a type of artificial hill that was used as a defensive structure in medieval times. Ballymoat is known for its 13th century castle and a book called the Book of Ballymoat that was written between 1390 and 1391 near the town. For over a hundred years it was the prized possession of the McDonough's and around the 16th century it fell into the possession of the O'Donnell clan and it would stay in their possession until the flight of the Earls in 1603. From 1620 until 1767 it resided in Trinity College Dublin, but later it disappeared from the library and was later found in Burgundy, France. In 1785 it was eventually returned to the Royal Irish Academy, where it remained one of its prized possessions. In Leitrim let's look at Carrick on Shannon or Caradulma Rouche in Irish. This could mean the rock on the river Shannon, but it could also mean the weir of the marshy ridge. In ancient times Carrick and Shannon was the stronghold of the O'Rourke's of Breffney. 
Nowadays it's a lovely place to visit but there is evidence of its dark past, most notably in the workhouse that was built in 1841. Workhouses served as shelters for the destitute, referred to as paupers, and upon entry residents were required to wear uniforms and were given a very basic diet. When the Grey Famine struck in 1845, these workhouses became inundated with families facing severe starvation. Disease spread quickly in these overcrowded spaces, and by the end of the famine there was over 163 workhouses in Ireland. And finally let's visit Roscommon and the town of Boyle or Monaster Nabulia in Irish which means Monastery of the River, which refers to the monastery built there in 1161. In the nearby Loch Key you will find Castle Island or McDermott's Castle that has a long and storied history going back thousands of years. The story I remember from visiting the area as a kid was the local legend of a girl called Una who was the daughter of the McDermott chief who fell in love with a boy from a lower class. The McDermott chief was angered by this and forbid his daughter from seeing him, but that didn't stop the poor boy who attempted to swim over to the island to see her. He tragically drowned in the lake and Una is said to have died from grief and they were both buried under an old twisted oak tree on the island. W.B. Yeats, the famous Irish writer, was a huge fan of the castle and it is said that he wanted to set it up as an artistic centre. And more recently it was voted in the top 10 of one of the most beautiful castles in the world. Now that completes our history tour of Ireland through the town place names. If there is any town or story you want covered in my next video, please let me know down in the comments. And please like and subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more interesting stories from Ireland. Sound and I'll see you in the next one. Salongafol. So